Hello and welcome back to our garden here in Norfolk. Now I'm often asked by people about how we go about making our compost. First thing I need to say is that it's taken years, literally years for us to get a recipe and a method that we're really comfortable with and can do well. But the truth is, is that it doesn't matter how good you are at it, so long as you can make and take that time to make some lovely compost, your garden will love you. Your vegetables will love you, your flowers will love you. The soil will be replenished of all of its nutrients and some humus and all the plants that you want to grow, they're going to be loving life. So, in today's video, we shall talk about how we make our compost. really is understanding the basics of what makes compost. You need green materials and you need brown materials. Now for the green, we predominantly use grass. You've seen on our videos many times that we have grass all between the beds. We have a huge expanse of grass in the family garden and also more in the front. So for 80% of the year, yeah, we've got lots of grass clippings that we can actually use for the green. We also have coffee shops in the local village that we can call on for the times of year when we don't quite have enough greens to balance the compost out. Also, everything else that uh, comes from our garden, and you probably saw the other day that uh, we were harvesting some garlic, or some of it we had green, and so They can be composted down as greens. Carrot tops. And I see Mrs W's been eating some broad beans. <laughs> oh, you caught me out. <laughs> They're very nice. <laughs> and in here equally, these were, these were some uh, onion tops or shallot tops from the other day. There's bits of lettuce. Potato peelings from our new potatoes. We harvested some new potatoes the other day. I can see there's some beetroot tops, orange peelings. So everything basically that we would normally just throw away, which is waste from the garden, now goes to feed what we call the beast. More about the beast shortly. <laughs> and then browns. I have said on a number of occasions that, you know, to make compost, browns is probably the most difficult one to get a hold of. But if you can find yourself, you know, a local gardener or tree surgeon or somebody who has some nice brown material and that can regularly get it, then we found such one. We scrounge it off him. It doesn't cost us anything. He even shreds it for us now. Save Mrs. W a job. And, yeah, just mix this in with... The greens but again if we get to a point where there aren't too many browns we always have a stock and over the year we collect cardboard it just needs to be like so but also we did invest a year or two ago in some in a sh uh, paper shredder and cardboard shredder and so we've always got a stack of this that we can add and use as a brown material and you can see here I have quite a large pile of wood chippings uh, we came across a tree surgeon and he was quite happy to deliver us a nice pile of wood chip 
We've well, used quite a bit of it, actually. It was probably twice the size of this. It was. <laughs> what I was going to say, you know, even with this, if I you can see just how dark that's going now, it's already starting to rot down. And if I dig down into it, you should see that it's quite hot in here. It really is hotter than you would imagine. Yeah, <laughs> there you go, the, the steam. Lovely smell too, as it's breaking down. And uh, what I'm in the middle of doing is actually taking it from here and up to where the compost bays are. I just want to let it rot down there and get going for the next 12 months or so, so that I can then start to use that as a brown source material to use on our compost heaps. And you may have noticed just lately, because I know you all are quite eagle-eyed, that um, in and around the veg garden, um, certain areas, especially um, what I call the primary areas, like where the watering butts are and behind the greenhouse, we've now laid wood chip all down there. The grass is not there anymore. Um, it's an area of high footfall, um, so the grass really doesn't look great anyway, because we're always going to the water butts and using the water. Um, yeah, service area, I think we, we can call it, can't we? It's the yes, servicing yeah. area. Now, the other thing I want to do with this is to get this in the bottom third of the raised bed that we still have to fill, because I think that can then be breaking down over the years, and yeah, that will help to feed the soil and the compost that are put on top of that. But you can see more about how I do that in a future video. And what I do do is just break it down just a little bit. If it's you know tougher stuff, you might need to use some steccateers or something, but carrot tops and onion tops, especially when they're this fresh, they don't take much pulling apart. So that's everything from the kitchen caddy and from yesterday evening where we actually harvested some carrots and well we had a couple of those uh, shallots didn't we Mrs W yeah and they're the yeah. tops to those they're mostly drying aren't they they are actually yes you can see actually the garlic it's all under here and because this structure will keep the rain off it and it can cure out here nicely So now all as I do is take one forkful and this is a case of roughly mixing it in with the green. It doesn't have to be perfect for us at this stage and you'll see why shortly. You've probably seen as I'm mixing it up that it's all sorts of things, even eggshells, because you can put those in the compost heap. They do take a bit longer to break down, but uh, they don't do no harm to the compost or the soil whatsoever. So now the next thing is to get it into the composter. Now, you've seen fleeting glances of this. This is what we call the beast. <laughs> and it's Mrs. W's homemade version of a hot composter. We've always struggled to get compost ready on time in one year. 
It never gets hot enough when we were just cold composting, because that's how we used to make our compost. When we went new dig, that weren't such a problem. But of course, being new dig now, we do need to be able to put our compost on the soil and on the plots. And the beauty about this is, is that we can make compost in here within 30 days. It's not compost you can use to, grow, to sow your seeds in, but it's more than good enough to a point where you could actually put it on your plots and let it break down. Now, we don't really need to do that because we don't want this until autumn time. So, as I empty it, it goes over to the current compost tile and it's slowly getting higher and higher and it starts to warm up again heats up and continues to break down even more until I need it. So I guess what I'm really trying to say is that we're halfway there. And then over the next five to six months, we we'll finish doing what it needs to do. Let's just have a look and see what's going inside this at the moment. Oh, yeah, Ooh, I can feel the heat. 65 degrees that is in there. Wow. Yeah, I can definitely feel the heat coming off that. Lovely. And what I need to do now is to fill it up some more. Here's what I've mixed. We'd like to just give it a mix. You can see that from one mowing I'll fill this up three times. And one of the reasons I'm not too, it's only a rough sort of mix in the barrow is that this, what I'm using here, will just mix it just a little bit more evenly once I have it in here. And of course, we need to feed the beast weekly. Because it doesn't take long for this to break down. One of Poppy's toys here, look. Oh. <laughs> Where would that come from? <laughs> I don't know. I was got caught up in the mower. <laughs> and as long as we keep this topped up like this, it'll maintain a nice hot compost. Of around 65 degrees. So I'll pop that in there now. They will of course have gone down somewhat, although it's now steadily climbing again.
It's still going up a bit, isn't it? Yeah. So even though this lid has been off while I've been filling it, it's not lost huge amounts of heat. So it's on its way to 50 degrees. And then we just put the lid back on. And I can guarantee you that when I look at this tomorrow morning, it'll be back up to 65 degrees. Or more. Or more. <laughs> has been known to go higher, hasn't it? <laughs> Certainly has. We start the composter off by actually getting it full right to the top. And then we let it do its thing for the next 30 days. Then after that, I take out what is in the bottom. And then it's filled up all the time from the top. So virtually every other week, we get a compost lid. And this is actually what it's like. As I say, I don't need this completely broken down. It can finish doing what it wants to do over there when we go and have a look in a moment. You can see it's really quite nice. It's not too wet. There's enough moisture so it can do its thing. You could, of course, leave this in here and it will break down even more and get to a better compost. You could also make the bits of brown smaller so that you'll be able to get finer compost. But that's not what I'm looking for. And then we go over to the cold composting base and then it goes on to here and you can see just how much we've been making since we started this off in April didn't we making yes, this yeah and in April, I think wasn't it yeah what I like to do is before I put the compost on that we've just got from the beast. I just put, put a fine sprinkling of against some more grass clippings on. And the chickens also play their role because their bedding, I then put a layer of their bedding on there too. Reason for that being is that that will then help to heat that up again while it's in here and it can finish then decomposing. And we'll get another two of those trays full of this to make the whole of the next layer. In fact, if you look next door, you can see we're almost at the end of the compost that we made before. It's a bit more lumpy at the bottom now because it's been sitting there for a while. And uh, obviously with all the weight on it, if you think the composting was up to here, but it soon breaks down really quite nice and you can see yeah there's still sticks and things in it but that doesn't particularly bother me at all she's after the bee I think hello Scylla <laughs> hello <laughs> so this is how we do our compost we've found it's the best way for us doesn't necessarily mean to say it's the best way for everybody but it certainly is for us to start the whole process off in here where we get really high temperatures of 65 70 degrees and then moving it over to where we used to do the cold composting and once we get so much in there I'll then turn it
and that will then cause that to heat up once again and continue to keep breaking down until I want it somewhere around October and November when I start to put more compost on top of our plots. Now, it doesn't really matter whether you hot compost, cold compost, however you do it, use Dalek bins, doesn't really matter. The main thing is, is that please, please do try to compost things. Because your compost that you make will have more food um, that you can add to your soil than anything you can buy. And it will save you having to go to regular trips to the dump to actually get rid of it or put it in your brown bins if you live here in the UK. The council will take it away and all they'll do is turn it into compost anyway, which you'll then go and buy. So why not make your own compost and get it spread on top of your plots? Regardless whether you're new dig like us or you garden the traditional way, compost is always really, really good. You can still dig that in, but if you particularly like to dig in animal manure, Compost is still great because you can use it as a mulch. Um, at this time of the year in June, you know, we haven't seen rain here now since back end of April, apart from the odd shower. That will help to keep the water that has fallen in your plots. Now as ever, do let us know down in the comments below how you do your composting. Do you compost? And I hope that just showing you the bits and pieces that we do to make our own compost will has inspired you to make your own compost because it is a very, very great thing. And we shall see you next time.